Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how we can use the Big IP to authenticate to the Kubernetes API and the Kubernetes dashboard, as well as log all the requests that are being made to both the API and the dashboard. In order to do this, we need to be able to authenticate using MTLS, OAuth tokens, as well as username and passwords. To start, we'll take a look at how we've configured our Big IP as an OAuth server. In this case, we're using the Big IP as an OpenID Connect authorization server, and we've configured it to use JWT tokens as well as supporting OpenID Connect. If we want to take a look at how that works from an end user perspective, we can use the OIDC debugger to make a request. In this case, we're specifying the URL of our authorization server, the client ID that's required, and we are requesting an access token as well as an ID token. An ID token contains information about the end user and an ID token is what is used by the Kubernetes API and the Kubernetes dashboard to authenticate a user. So if we want to take a look at the contents of what an ID token looks like, we can use the JWT debugger to take a look at the contents of it. And you can see here, this is specifying that we have the subject Eric that is the identity of the user. The second part of this is how we have configured the big IP to authenticate the, the API itself. In this case, we're making use of a API protection policy that has been configured to support MTLS, OAuth tokens, as well as username and password via basic auth. In the case of MTLS, we are also making use of a feature called C3D so that as the requests are coming in, we validate the certificates, and then the Big IP is dynamically regenerating the certificate to the backend Kubernetes API. In the case of an OAuth token, we're presenting the API with an access token that is uh, being presented by the end user, and we're dynamically converting that access token into an ID token that is then presented to the Kubernetes API. And in the case of an end user that is using a basic auth or username and password, we're providing Active Directory authentication of the user and then we are using the authenticating proxy to insert headers that the Kubernetes API will use to authenticate the user. So let's take a look at what that looks like when we connect to the Kubernetes API. So the first request is going to be using MTLS, where we're going to use the user Kubernetes admin We're going to specify the cluster where we're going to connect via the big IP, and we're just going to request the pods that are running. So in this case, we're just showing that we have authenticated to the, uh, successfully. And we can also verify that we are going to see the logs from this. The way that we're able to see the traffic that is going through to the Kubernetes API is that we have configured a virtual server that is for the Kubernetes API. And on that, we have logging policies that are set to log all requests. If we go down to our security and look at under event logs, we'll see that we have successfully captured the logs for the MTLS connection. And this is made possible because we're making use of a feature called C3D which dynamically takes the certificates that presented by the kubectl and then regenerates an ephemeral certificate that is presented to the backend server. This configuration of using C3D can be seen if we take a look at the client SSL profile where there is a checkbox configuration for enabling C3D. There is a similar configuration on the server SSL profile that is used to present to the Kubernetes API. And the Kubernetes API itself is configured to trust the CA that is generating these ephemeral certificates. So now that we've shown you 
how it looks like to use um, the MTLS, let's go take a look at converting an access token to an ID token. So we're going to go back to our OpenID Connect. We're going to grab the access token that we grabbed previously, and we're going to re-authenticate. This time we're going to use the user OIDC, which is configured to use OpenID Connect. And we're going to specify that we're going to provide the access token in this case. And the big IP will convert that access token into an ID token that is understood by the Kubernetes API. Now it's been more than five minutes since we made that initial login, so we'll just re-auth to get it. You could configure your authorization server with a longer timeout for that access token as needed. So we'll just remake that request. The user Eric is not authorized to access resources in the default namespace, but is authorized in the Chen namespace. And similarly, if we go back and take a look at the big IP, we'll, we'll see that the all of the end user traffic is captured as well. And we can do the same with basic auth. In this case, we have configured a user that is using basic authentication with the username Eric and the password Eric. And this is going to be authenticating using Active Directory. So in this case, again, similar to the previous case, the user Eric is only authorized to use the basic auth. And similarly, if we look at the logs, we'll see that the user has authenticated. We've also added additional information in our policy to identify what type of authentication that's being used. In this case, we can see that basic authentication was used for this request versus in the former request that it was strictly using OAuth. Now, and in this case, we've taken a look at using API-based authentication, but we can also do the same for a web application like the Kubernetes dashboard. When you use the Kubernetes dashboard, the Kubernetes dashboard expects by default to use an open ID connect token. So in this case, you can see here when you're accessing the Kubernetes dashboard by default, it's expecting a token. And the token that it's expecting is this ID token that you would get from your uh, from your open ID authorization server. So what we're going to use the big IP for is a way to authenticate to the Kubernetes dashboard using MTLS, using an OAuth token, access token, as well as using a username and password via Active Directory. The policy that we're going to use for the dashboard is going to look similar to the policy that we used for the API profile. In this case, if we take a look at this access policy, we'll see that we are, the first part of the policy is we're checking for whether the end user is using MTLS. If they are using MTLS, we verify the identity of the certificate and we convert that certificate request into an OAuth bearer token that would present the Kubernetes dashboard with the ID token. We have also modified the login page so that we can make a choice of whether you want to use OpenID Connect or if you want to uh, use a username and password to authenticate the user. In this case, it could be using a local database or this could be Active Directory that you're authenticating or in the case of using OpenID Connect, this, uh, in this particular example, I'm using the Big IP itself as the OAuth authorization server, but this could also be a third party uh, OpenID Connect server as well. 
So let's take a look at what that looks like from an end user perspective. So now we're going to authenticate using MTLS. For most end user applications, you wouldn't expect to use MTLS with a web application, but for many of our federal customers that are using CAC PIV for our identity, this is a pretty common pattern. So in this case, we have a certificate ERIC that has been signed by a CA that's trusted by the big IP and will dynamically uh, generate an ID token based upon this. And you can see that we are now authenticated as the user Eric and we've just used MTLS. Similarly, if we go back, we can also authenticate using, uh, using OpenID in this case, we're not going to use a certificate for authentication. We're going to check this box for using OAuth. Log in as the user error, which is using Active Directory. And similar to before, we have authenticated as the user error. And the third example is where we're going to authenticate just directly via the big IP and not use OpenID Connect for authentication. So in this case, we've show, also shown using three different methods of authenticating to the Kubernetes dashboard, similarly to how we are authenticating to the Kubernetes API. And similar to the Kubernetes API example, all the requests that we've been making to the big IP have been captured in our security logs so that we can ensure that we have an audit of all of the end user activity. So in this case, we can take a look at the requests that were coming in, and we can see that our third request was coming in and that it was uh, being done by the user Eric. Similarly, uh, this is a previous example where we're using OpenID Connect. And then in the first example where we were also using um, MTLS that we can capture all of the information that was collected. So as you can see, the big IP has been used to authenticate to the Kubernetes API, as well as the Kubernetes dashboard using MTLS OAuth tokens, as well as a username and password via Active Directory. Thank you.